This is the South Central Texas Summer 2019 Seasonal Outlook. My name is Brett Williams. I am the Climate Focal Point here at the National Weather Service Forecast Office in Austin, San Antonio. And today's date is Monday, June 24th, 2019. And we will go ahead and get started. Before we delve into the summer outlook, let's take a look back at what we had here across the region in the spring. As far as temperatures are concerned, we were generally near normal uh, to slightly below normal for much of the region. In fact, we were slightly below normal at San Antonio, at Austin Camp Mabry, as well as Del Rio. However, we were a little bit above normal for temperatures at Austin Bergstrom Airport. As far as precipitation is concerned, that was a bit more of a mixed result. Uh, it was very wet in Austin. You can see here that Austin Mabry tied for its 15th wettest spring, and Austin Bergstrom had its 8th wettest spring on record, both of those sites uh, around 6 inches above normal rainfall for the springtime months. At San Antonio, we were pretty dry, uh, a little bit over an inch below normal. And then at Del Rio, we were kind of about average, only less, about, less than uh, half an inch below normal there. This is a look at the uh, the severe weather season that we had. It was a fairly active spring severe weather season across the region, which kind of went against the spring outlook. Uh, typically, El Nino correlates to a little bit below normal severe weather activity across our region, and we uh, kind of saw a little bit of the opposite of that. So this is the SPC day one convective outlooks across our region for March through basically today. Uh, and you can see that we had many slight risk days with four enhanced risk days, uh, two here in April. Um, one in March and one in May, plus three additional enhanced risk days here in June. Um, one thing to keep in mind, though, is a lot of these slight risk areas and some of these enhanced uh, were for uh, western portions of Alberta County uh, for activity across the Big Bend and the Trans-Pecos region. So that doesn't necessarily reflect what we saw across the majority of the region, but we were fairly active this spring as far as uh, severe weather is concerned. We had a total of 192 severe reports, uh, four tornado reports, 99 hail reports, with 17 of those being 2-inch diameter or greater hail, 65 thunderstorm wind damage reports, and then 24 measured severe wind gusts, which is wind gusts 58 miles an hour or greater. As far as major severe weather events, we didn't really have that many of them. Um, we had a, a giant hail event in San Antonio on April the 13th uh, that impacted portions of the northwestern uh, areas of San Antonio. Uh, we had an EF2 tornado in LaGrange on May the 3rd, and then on June 9th, uh, we had a fairly significant wind and hail event that uh, went across the region. Looking at the, the rainfall, the heavy rainfall and the flash flooding, uh, we issued a total of 34 flash flood warnings uh, this spring. Uh, we had a very wet period, uh, the first 10 days of May here. Uh, where we saw widespread two inches across almost the entire region with a little corridor here across the eastern hill country and through the Austin metro region where we had anywhere from six to ten inches of rain that fell across that 10-day period. And this led to many instances of flash flooding as well as some moderate river flooding across the region. So looking ahead to summer 2019, uh, severe weather decreases significantly as we head into the summer. Um, however, flash flood reports tend to peak in, uh, in June and July. And then over here on the right, you can see that June is the wettest month of the year in San Antonio, and it's the second wettest at Austin and Del Rio. Uh, of course, we're almost most of the way through June at this point, and then once we get into uh, July and August, uh, rainfall tends to go down a little bit. So this is the 90 and 180 day rainfall as of June 24th today. On the left here is the 90-day percent of normal rainfall, and you can see that most areas are near or above normal rainfall over the past 90 days, uh, especially across areas here from Del Rio uh, up toward Rock Springs, uh, much of the hill country, uh, and the Austin metro area and points east have been above normal. There is one exception, though. This little area here across the, co uh, the Rio Grande Plains has been below normal rainfall over the last 90 days. Looking at the 180-day percent of normal rainfall, a little bit more variance here. Uh, again, the Austin area, portions of the hill country, southern Edwards Plateau, down to Del Rio, have seen above normal rainfall over the last 180 days. 
whereas portions of the San Antonio metro area and south and west from there across the Rio Grande Plains, a uh, small area here across the southern coastal plains closer to Victoria, um, a small area across Llano County, and again, western Valverde County has seen below normal rainfall over the last 180 days. So how does that uh, look for our drought outlook? Um, so this is the most recent drought outlook that was released last week. And you can see we have a very small area of D0 to D1 creeping back in across portions of the Rio Grande Plains. This is just a short-term drought um, and only a very small area, only 6% in abnormally dry, which is D0 with 1% in moderate drought or D1. Uh, the Climate Prediction Center anticipates drought conditions growing and persisting across portions of the Rio Grande Plains this summer. So this shows you um, the map here where it shows drought persisting and drought development likely. This is the CPC 6 to 10 and 8 to 14 day outlooks. On the top is uh, 6 to 10 days, so this is temperatures and precip over the 6 to 10 day period. And then 8 to 14 day temps and precip here on the bottom. And generally near normal temperatures are expected with a little area across the Austin metro area and points north and east. Um, possibly seeing cooler than normal uh, temperatures over this time period. With uh, what are the normal conditions expected for much of the region uh, over the next 6 to 14 days. So let's take a look at the INSO outlook. Uh, we still have weak El Nino conditions present. Uh, this has been the case uh, for the past few months now. Uh, equatorial sea surface temperatures are still above average across most of the Pacific. And the pattern of anomalous convection and winds are consistent with El Nino. The most recent update that was released this morning from the Climate Prediction Center predicts a 66% chance, so a two-thirds chance, for El Nino conditions to continue through the summer months with around a 50 to 55% chance for El Nino continue through the fall. So what kind of impact might this have on our temperatures this summer? So I went back and looked at um, the 17 summers in which El, El Nino conditions were present since 1950. You can see those here. And I looked at the, uh, the mean temperatures at our official climate sites of Austin, San Antonio, and Del Rio. And summer in South Central Texas is typically near or slightly cooler than the climatological normals during El Nino conditions. So when you look at the, the averages and the medians from all 17 El Nino summers, uh, these fall almost completely in line with the 1981 to 2010 normals. Um, however, when you uh, break it down by actual uh, individual summers, the majority of these summers are near or below normal. Um, so 13 out of 17 at Austin were near or below normal for temperatures. 12 out of 17 at San Antonio, and 11 out of 17 were near or below normal at Del Rio. Uh, El Nino typically correlates to neither an increase nor a decrease in the risk for temperature extremes for South Central Texas, uh, with a slight favor toward an increase in cold temperature extremes for portions of Central Texas as you get up to Burn Williamson counties. And then the CFS model, the climate forecast system, which is a mid to long range model, it is suggesting generally near normal temperatures this summer as well. Now taking a look at uh, precipitation rainfall, again went back and looked at the 17 summers in which El Nino conditions were present. And summer in south central Texas tends to be near normal or slightly drier than normal during El Nino conditions. Um, again, the average of El Nino summers uh, came out a little bit drier than normal for Austin, San Antonio, and Del Rio. And then when you compare the individual summers, uh, 13 out of 17 of the El Nino summers were drier than normal at Austin, with 14 out of 17 drier than normal at San Antonio, and then even 15 out of 17 drier than normal at Del Rio. Uh, and keep in mind that as we get into the mid to late summer, our precipitation is largely a function of the tropics. Uh, and El Nino typically tempers the Atlantic, uh, Caribbean, and Gulf tropical season, uh, which means that uh, slight favor toward maybe less than normal precipitation as we get toward the middle to the end of summer. There are a few notable exceptions here. Uh, 1987 uh, was the seventh wettest summer in Austin. Also was the uh, Guadalupe River flood in Comfort. 
1997 was the 11th wettest summer in Austin. 2002 was the 14th wettest summer in Austin and the second wettest in San Antonio uh, and led to uh, flooding widespread across the region. And then 2004 was the 9th wettest summer in Austin. The CFS model suggests near to slightly above normal rainfall across south central Texas this summer, uh, primarily as you get more toward uh, the hill country in central Texas. The flash flooding outlook, um, a slight majority of the region shows no percent increase in wet extremes nor dry extremes during El Nino summers, with a portion of the Rio Grande Plains here in the yellow uh, showing a slight percent increase in dry extremes during El Nino summers. Moving on now to the tropical outlook, uh, this is the Texas hurricane climatology. The peak hurricane season for Texas occurs basically from mid-August through September. Uh, the greatest threat for South Central Texas due to hurricanes or tropical storms is the inland flooding from the heavy rain. We can get tropical storm force winds across a pretty large area of the region, uh, as well as low end hurricane force winds across the far southeastern counties. We had this with Hurricane Harvey in August of 2017. And we can also get some tornadoes from the outer rain bands of the hurricane or the tropical storm, but primarily the biggest threat for us here is uh, inland flooding from the heavy rain. So what are the impacts of El Nino on the hurricane season? Well, El Nino typically increases the vertical wind shear across the Atlantic, Gulf of Mexico, Caribbean basins, uh, which is a hindrance to tropical storm development. They really like uh, and thrive in low wind shear environments. Um, one thing to note is that El Nino typically means a more active eastern Pacific. Uh, this may have an impact on us as we head into mid to late September as a westerly set up across southern Arizona and into northern Mexico and can help recurve these systems toward Texas. So looking at the Gulf of Mexico tropical cyclones over the 1981 to 2018 period, um, top left shows El Nino, which averages about three cyclones per year in the Gulf of Mexico. And El Nino neutral um, summer and falls tropical seasons, we typically see about five tropical cyclones per year. And then La Nina, again, about five tropical cyclones per year. And Texas is twice as likely to be impacted by a tropical storm or a hurricane during La Nina or Enso neutral versus El Nino. So what does the National Hurricane Center predict? Well, this is what they came out with uh, back toward the end of May and they predict a 70% chance for normal or slightly below normal Atlantic Basin hurricane season. So 40% near normal with 30% below normal. However, they do still have a 30% chance for an above normal season. Uh, they came up with uh, 9 to 15 named storms, 4 to 8 hurricanes, and then 2 to 4 major hurricanes. That would be Cat 3 or above. And on average, uh, those end up being 11 named storms, 6 hurricanes, and 2 major hurricanes. So, as you can see, pretty much in line with the average. And again, El Nino typically puts a damper on the Atlantic hurricane season with that uh, increase in the wind shear across the Atlantic basin. Um, however, this could be partially counteracted by warmer than normal ocean waters in the main development region. Uh, furthermore, El Nino conditions may weaken in the fall. Uh, keep in mind, earlier I mentioned that the CPC... Uh, says that uh, only about a 50 to 55 percent chance of El Nino continuing through the fall. So if El Nino weakens, that could lead to more tropical activity than expected. And again, you know, even though we're expecting a near normal to maybe slightly below normal hurricane season, it only takes one uh, landfalling tropical cyclone or hurricane to have major impacts across the region. So want to make sure that uh, you are prepared in the event that that does happen. So what does the CPC show for the summer and rainfall outlook? Uh, they show generally even chances for above or below normal temperatures for the northern half of the region with a slight tilt toward above normal temperatures for the southern half of the region. And as far as precipitation goes, they have us at even chances for above or below normal rainfall. Looking at the summer fire weather outlook, uh, most of the region right now is drought free. We do have that small area of short term dryness or drought developing across the Rio Grande Plains, but soil moisture levels are still elevated. This is the calculated soil moisture anomaly from yesterday. And you can see that generally across the region we are uh, a little bit wetter than normal across our soils. And the energy release component remains low 
uh, below average across the region. So you can see here we're still running below average, which is this gray line here. And the National Interagency Fire Center predicts near normal significant wildland fire potential for the summer. So here's the, the map for July and the map for August. And you can see that they predict around a normal fire potential. Of course, we could still see brief periods of elevated critical fire conditions developing. And then if we get a lengthy period of little to no rainfall, uh, fire concerns could increase. So wrapping everything up now, this is the uh, the impacts outlook. Uh, for temperatures, we're expecting generally near normal temperatures this summer. Uh, heavy rain, flash flooding, and river flooding, expecting near to slightly below normal impacts. As again, we typically receive near to slightly below normal rainfall during El Nino summers, as well as a quieter than normal Atlantic hurricane season expected. Uh, severe weather, again, severe weather isn't all that common uh, in the summers, especially as we get into July and August. So we're expecting generally near normal impacts for that. Fire weather, again, expecting near normal impacts from wildland fires, but uh, again, this could increase if we get a prolonged period of little to no rainfall. And then tropical weather, expecting near to slightly below normal impacts from tropical storms and hurricanes, as El Nino typically leads to fewer Atlantic Basin tropical storms and hurricanes. But again, remember, it only takes one event to have impacts. So that will wrap it up. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to contact us here at our public line. You can email me directly there or go online to weather.gov slash Austin or weather.gov slash San Antonio. Thank you very much.